The people that were balling out a couple of years ago buying G-Wagons and Rolexes, thinking they were smart investments even though they couldn't afford them, are now paying the price. Take a look. This is the Rolex market index from Watch Charts, and it shows the average used Rolex sales price. And what you'll see is that in 2020 and 2021, Rolex prices were booming. Everybody wanted to buy Rolex, and Rolex prices soared until Rolex prices peaked around March 2022. And since then, Rolex prices have been falling deeper and deeper and deeper as we get into 2024. But it's not just luxury watches that are seeing this price decline, it's also luxury cars. I did a quick search for G Wagons for sale in Detroit, and what you see is that nearly every single G Wagon is listed for thousands of dollars below market value now, and sometimes tens of thousands of dollars below market value. Now, I made a video on this topic a few months ago where I covered how in 2020, 2021, and into 2022, you could not get a G-Wagon or a Rolex. And if you did, you had to pay way above asking price. Everything was selling way above MSRP. Everything was selling way above asking price. And now... We're starting to see the prices of these things fall, where not only can you get it below asking price, but we're starting to see this influx of inventory, which is causing the prices of these things to fall. But today, I want to take it one step further because I want to go over what's causing this change so you not only can understand the cause of what's happening, but also so that way you can find the opportunities. Let's go back to this Rolex chart, and what you'll see is the Rolex prices peaked here in March of 2022. Make sure you remember that. The reason why that date is so significant is because March 2022 is when our economy started turning off the free money printer. This is an article from CNBC titled, The Federal Reserve Bank Approves the First Interest Rate Hike in More Than Three Years, and they see six more interest rate hikes ahead, and this was published on March 16th, 2022. So now you can start to see the correlation. March 2022 was the peak for luxury items, and that was also when the Federal Reserve Bank started raising interest rates. And by the way, just as an additional piece of information, when the Federal Reserve Bank started raising interest rates, they said that they expected six more interest rate hikes. Well, here we are today at the time of recording this video, and we have seen 11 interest rate hikes. And the most recent statement by the Federal Reserve Bank is that they are not done raising interest rates yet, and we can expect potentially more interest rate hikes in the future. Now, the reason why this is so important to understand is because raising interest rates has multiple different effects on the economy, and some of these effects are seen sooner than others. For example, if you wanted to go out and get a half a million dollar mortgage to buy a home at a 3% mortgage, you're paying $2,100 a month. But at an 8% mortgage, now you're paying $3,700 a month. That's quite a big jump when interest rates go up. That's why the housing market is considered an interest rate sensitive industry because as soon as interest rates change, it changes the affordability of being able to buy a home. Now, in today's economy, it's a little bit weird because we still have a very severe inventory shortage and people are willing to pay cash for homes. So even though interest rates have gone up, Home prices have stayed high and in some instances even gone higher. But the second thing that interest rates do, which takes a little bit more time, is they also reduce the amount of money in our economic system. See, when you go out to borrow money, maybe you're borrowing money for a mortgage, you're borrowing money for a car, you put money in your credit card, this money then gets created and it enters the economic system when you go out to borrow money. So when you take on debt, money gets created, more money enters the economic system and that money gets spent and then that flows through the economic system. But when interest rates go up, now less people are borrowing money. Just like when you go to Macy's, more people are buying things when things are on sale than when things are full price. So now when you have to go out and borrow money and interest rates go up, less people are going out and borrowing money. Less people are spending money, which means less money gets created and less money is entering our economic system, which cools down the economy. This has an effect on our economic system, which takes time to realize. Now, again, some of this can be pretty obvious. Like in 2022, if you wanted to go out and buy a G-Wagon, you couldn't do so because there was a two-year waiting list to buy a G-Wagon, even if you're willing to pay $10,000 over MSRP, which was really the standard back then. Today, you want to go out and buy a G-Wagon. Well, most G-Wagons are on sale, but price is getting cut because people want to sell out of their G-Wagons because some people need the cash. But the delayed effects of higher interest rates are something we'll be seeing more of in 2024 and 2025, assuming interest rates stay high because that's going to impact the economy and asset prices. Now, I do want to let you know that if you are interested in learning more about investing and building wealth, my team at Briefs Media has a full ebook on how to build wealth as an investor that goes over the basics of how do you build the mindset of an investor to how do you start investing to how do you spend your money smartly to how do you earn more money and how do you protect your assets this ebook is packed with value it has a ton of information on how you can start putting your money to work and it's completely free 
So if you want to read this ebook on how you can start managing your money and building your wealth, I got the ebook for you down in the description below, or you can go to briefs.co slash ebook. The delayed impact of higher interest rates on the economy and assets are independent, but they're also connected at the same time. And if you understand this, it will help you find the opportunities for you to actually put your money. Because in the economy, well, our economic system runs on spending. The more money you spend, the more money somebody else makes. And when people are spending money, businesses are making money. When businesses are making money, asset prices are going up. That's great for investors, great for business owners, not so good for consumers because you're spending your money. Now, normally it's okay if you're spending within your means. But what we're seeing happen today is that more and more Americans are going into debt. More and more Americans are digging into their savings. More and more Americans are digging into the 401ks. That way they can keep spending. In fact, we've seen spending outgrow wage growth for a while now. So you'd have to think that eventually we're going to hit a breaking point. And if spending starts to cool down, that would cool down business revenue and that would cool down business profits. If that cool down happens, well, if you are an investor in these companies, if you're investing in the stock market and companies are making smaller revenues and smaller profits, it would make the investments maybe a little bit less attractive. So you'd have to think that higher interest rates would have a downward impact on the economy, which could impact asset prices. But also independently, higher interest rates also impact asset prices. And the easiest way for me to explain this is by talking about real estate. Because in commercial real estate, investors buy real estate because of something called a cap rate. A cap rate means what type of return are you going to get on a property? Let's assume now that I wanted to buy a $1 million property that had a 10 cap, a 10 cap rate property. What that means is this million dollar property is going to generate $100,000 of profit a year. That's what a 10 cap means. It's a 10% return on your money before debt. So if I bought this property for a million dollars, it's paying $100,000 of profit. Well, that's the money that goes into my bank account. And then if I have debt, I could use that $100,000 of profit to pay off the debt. So a 10 cap means I'm making a 10% return on the property. Well, what we're seeing today is a lot of properties are selling for three, four, five, six cap rates. But if you want to go out and get a mortgage, you want to go out and get a commercial loan, you're going to be paying 7 8% on your interest rate. Now, let's think about that for a second. You want to buy a property for a 5 cap, for a 5% return on your money, but then you want to pay 7% to the bank. It's very difficult to make any money when the rate of return is lower than the amount of debt that you have to pay, the rate of debt that you have to pay. And so if you have to pay 8% on your mortgage, but you're only getting a 5% return, you're going to have a very hard time making any money. That's why generally when interest rates go up, you'll see asset prices fall because asset prices will have to fall now to make it a attractive enough investment. Now, what we've been seeing happen is a lot of landlords and commercial property owners are saying, I don't want to cut the prices of my property. Plus, there's not that many properties for sale. Plus, people have cash. People have cash in their banks and they will pay 10, 20, 30 million dollars cash on a property so I don't need to cut the price. So there hasn't been a real need for asset owners to cut the prices of their properties even though interest rates have gone up because the interest rate hiking cycle has been so quick. I mean, we've raised interest rates 11 times in a year and a half. That's pretty quick. And so this is right now a second delayed effect of higher interest rates is generally downward pressure on asset prices. But this is where things get tricky because, well, we don't know what's going to happen in 2024. It's an election year. There could be a slowdown in the economy, which could force the Federal Reserve Bank to cut interest rates. But the thing that you want to remember is that there are impacts of higher interest rates. And some of these impacts are more in the sensitive areas, like we've seen in housing, even though it hasn't affected prices. But we've seen the more sensitive areas now in the luxury parts, cars, watches, which has created some opportunity for some people to buy. And if interest rates continue to go up, well, that could put more downward pressure on these things. But there's also the less sensitive parts, which take more time to develop, which are things like the impacts of higher interest rates on the economy and the impact of higher interest rates on asset prices. Both of these things affect one another because a negative impact on the economy would affect asset prices, but higher interest rates independently affect asset prices as well because as an investor, you want your borrowing cost to be less than your return on the asset. And if your borrowing cost is higher than the return on the asset, then many investors, well, they won't find a good deal in that asset. But until you see a shift in demand and supply, that won't really cause that shift in pricing. That's where it takes time. And that's why patience is such a powerful 
skill or virtue for investors. But this is where that financial education is so important so you understand the different factors that can affect the pricing of assets. Now, does this mean that you should not invest until you see the perfect price or for the perfect time in the economy? No. This means you need to be a financially educated investor and understand how different parts of the economy play together. That way you can find the best opportunities for you to put your money to work. Read the title of this Wall Street Journal article. Americans are still spending money like there's no tomorrow. Concerts, trips, and designer handbags are taking priority over saving for a home or a rainy day. This article is interesting. And the reason why it's interesting is because it goes against what pretty much every economist has been talking about for the last year and a half, which could 